If you are having shoulder pain and you are wondering if you have torn your rotator cuff in your shoulder or if you have just injured it, this video is for you so stick around. Hey, how's it going? This is Dr. Saman here from All Things PT and in this video I'm going to talk about some of the special tests that you can do to find out if you have a rotator cuff tear in your shoulder or if you have a shoulder impingement. Before we move forward, let's talk about something. So <clears throat> let's say if this paper right here represents your uh, shoulder muscle. And it, it is true for any muscle out there, okay? So there are two types of shoulder tear, broadly speaking. So first of all, it's going to be a partial tear. And second, it's going to be a complete tear of a muscle. When it comes to a partial tear, you have to remember if this is a muscle right here. This could be a partial tear, which is called a small thickness partial tear. This could be also a partial tear. This is called medium thickness partial tear. And this is going to be a big or massive tear, okay? And then followed by a full tear. So just because you have a torn rotator cuff, it could be a small, medium, large or full. So that kind of depends, right? Now, here's a quick way for you to find out if you have a, a full tear or a partial tear. If you have a full tear, it's going to be first of all, followed by a event. So you maybe you fell on that arm or somebody stabbed you from behind, or it's going to have a traumatic event most of the time. Uh, it could, sometimes what happens is a partial tear, it could start with age, get worse with time and the partial tear could change into full tear. A full tear it will be very painful when it does happen. It'll be painful for a couple of weeks and then it's not going to be too painful, but it's going to be very, very, very weak, okay? That's how you know if it's a full tear or partial tear. Full tear hurts a lot at the beginning and a couple of weeks, it's not really gonna hurt. Partial tear, on the other hand, is going to really, really, really hurt. A small tear is going to hurt less compared to a massive tear, but it's going to hurt, okay? and that's how you know. So a partial tear, maybe it hurts a little bit as you go up, as you go up. If medium tear, it really hurts, and a partial tear, as you move your shoulder, it's gonna hurt a lot, right? A lot, plus you feel like you don't have enough strength. A full tear, you'll just be right here going, right? Just like that. And you feel like it's not, doesn't hurt. It feels like weakness is the primary limiting factor. Without wasting time, let's go over some special tests. The first of all, it's going to be a drop arm test. What you're going to do, you're gonna go all the way up like this. And you can use, if you're not having enough strength, you can use your good arm to pull and so says this is my right side is an affected one and you can go all the way up and what you're going to do is you are going to keep your left arm close by or un unaffected arm close by and what you're going to do you are going to kind of try your best to slowly lower and this is how it normally should look like okay but if you go all the way using your good arm as you go, you'll feel like it drops. Sorry, can you feel like it's catching? You have a rotator cuff tear, and that is going to be your first sign. Typically, a lot of times, the bigger the tear as you go up, like just like I said, you start by shrugging, and that's called a positive shrug shrine sign. And usually, this happens when you have a full tear. So as you go up, instead of being going like this, you'll do something like this. You'll hike, and you will kind of twist on the opposite side and that along with the drop arm sign is a very good confirmation that you have some sorts of tear the next sign or a special test that you could do is going to be what you call an external rotation test and that is to test if you have torn your infraspinatus okay so and that's the muscle right behind right here okay all you're going to do you're going to use your good arm again to turn the affected arm right here and your job is to hold it okay hold it like that now if you are unable to hold it and this slaps right back at you okay you're here let it go and it comes back 
that's called a positive test and that especially if there is no pain with that that means that you have a torn your rotator cuff but if you are in this position right here and you have a really hard time keeping it and it hurts a lot and you are but you're slowly going this direction that means you have a partial tear the last test you are going to do is called a uh, is a left off test okay so what you're going to do you're going to put your hand and you're going to put it right behind your back so if you are here and you are going to lift off like that and this is to test your subscapularis muscle that's on the other side of the rotator cuff and so this way if you can't even do that then that means you have a full tear again you can just barely go but it hurts a lot partial tear is more likely okay so here do that okay and you should be able to do that and that's normal if you cannot even go or if you even have and if you even have a hard time doing this then that means that means that there is a high likelihood that you have a rotator cuff tear if one of them is positive uh, yes hurts more and but you can kind of do it if things are vague you know only one test is positive out of three well it's it's not a a, a hundred percent accurate none of these tests are hundred percent accurate right uh but you know if all three are obviously positive chances are you have a tear so let's move on. Let's talk about shoulder impingement. So I'll before we move on to the special test, let's show what a shoulder impingement is. Let's talk real quick about anatomy first. So this is going to be a rotator cuff. If you look from the front, this right muscle right here in the front, right over your shoulder blade is going to be your subscapularis. If you look from the behind, this red muscle right here is going to be your infraspinatus. Right down is going to be your teres minor. And this is the main muscle right here on the in the in the blue in color right here. This is going to be a supraspinatus. When it comes down to your shoulder impingement or shoulder tear, the supraspinatus is the first first muscle to get involved followed by your infraspinatus. Let's talk a little real quick about the job of the rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff is responsible for stabilizing your arm as your arm moves up or into any position. So what happens if there was no rotator cuff? So let's talk about this one. So if this rotator cuff in this arm was not present, what's going to happen is every time you move your arm, this uh, arm is going to come out of this socket right here but it also has a really major function so every time you go up right so you see how this is hitting right here every time you go up so the rotator cuff is responsible for pulling your arm bone down so that as it goes up your arm bone doesn't hit on the hood Okay, so what happens is when the rotator cuff is not functioning properly, the same thing happens. So instead of this pulling it down to avoid the hood, this arm bone is going to hit this hood right here. And the muscle that is involved is going to be your supraspinatus muscle right here because it's pinching in this hood in, in the, called the AC joint. Now this is what you call an impingement when your when your arm bone is not sufficiently going down and as a result this muscle supraspinatus is going getting impinged and over time if this impingement right here is going to lead to a rotator cuff tear. So let's go back. Now that we know what a shoulder impingement is, let's talk about uh, some special tests. First one is going to be your painful arc. Like we just discussed, as we go up and reach about a 60 degrees or so, space in the joint decreases and you start having pain. So if you have a pain somewhere from one uh, from somewhere from 60 degrees to about a 120 degrees or so and then it decreased the pain decreases after that that means it's a positive painful arc sign one of the few special tests that you can easily do to find out if you have a shoulder impingement or not the second test we will call it an empty can test so what you're going to do you're going to raise your shoulder this much or so about 90 degrees you're going to point the thumbs down and sometimes this this test itself is provocative and if this kind of hurts right there in the front again you are pinching that supraspinatus muscle and if it doesn't you are going to put a little bit of an overpressure down here and if that provokes symptoms 
uh, then also it's positive. So you can go up here about 90 degrees, point your thumbs down. And then if this, pro if this is painful enough, don't move on to next step. And if it's not, push down. And if any of those movement hurts, that's a positive sign. Again, that's a second test that you can do for a shoulder impingement. The third one is called Hawking's Kennedy. Very simple and very similar. Same thing, you're going to get your arms up to 90, bend your elbow, and then you are going to go down and use the other arm to put a little bit of a over pressure. And so if you have pain in that area, if you are finding a similar provocative pain, then chances are if you, have, you may have a shoulder impingement. Now, None of these tests, if you just do one, it's going to be again 100% guarantee that you have a impingement. However, if all of these tests are positive, then it is pretty likely that you have a shoulder impingement. And that was three tests that you could do at home to find out if you have a rotator cuff tear and three tests that you can do to determine if you have a shoulder impingement. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, please make sure you click the like button. On the next two videos, I'm going to share some basic exercise that you could do at home uh, to, <clears throat> to work on that rotator cuff tear and to ro work on the shoulder impingement. So please make sure you like the video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel because more contents on physical therapy coming soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.